Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're cruising in the 96 Mercury Mystique. We're heading east towards New York City for the TST 2024 big event. Um, it's going to be this Saturday. Bernie Thompson is presenting a lecture, so I couldn't pass that up. Signed up and um, we're heading there, staying overnight. Meeting up with Eric O from South Main Auto and uh, Josiah from Blue Skies Mobile Auto Repair, so that's going to be fun. And on the way, we have one diagnosis to do. 2020 Toyota Tundra with a parking assist sensor fault after some kind of body repair. So that will be our next stop on the way. And on this trip, the Mystique, if everything goes well, <laughs> should roll over the 300,000 mile mark. Now in reality it's well over 300,000 miles because the uh, odometer had some issues in the past, but it'll be the official rollover, so I'm excited for that. And uh, yeah, we'll get there soon, so let's go look at this Toyota Tundra. All right, here we are in Don Smith's uh, shop. This is, he gets the parts cannon vehicles here. So here's the uh, 2020 Toyota Tundra. So the story of this thing is, it was smashed in the rear bumper in the right rear corner, right here. Boom. The bedside is messed up, bumper is messed up, and the parking aid assist icon said, hey, this sensor is messed up. Okay. So the body shop replaced the bumper, replaced the sensor, fixed the bedside, looks really nice. And then they said we have to take it to the dealer to get it calibrated for the ADOS system, you know, lane assist. Not parking aid, the lane assist. So, you know, that's fine. Went to the dealer, they got it calibrated. And now they're saying, hey, you have a bad parking aid sensor. That system doesn't work. And the owner's like, and they told him that he needs a front right parking aid sensor. What the heck? The accident was in the back. The whole system worked fine up until the accident and the only um, message it was setting was the right rear sensor. Now, let's see what it does on the dash. So we hop in here. We just need to turn the key on. We don't need to start the truck or anything. So we'll look on the display here. Parking assist malfunction. And we see these two are flashing red with a cross and then five icons are flashing saying malfunction. Okay? And that's repeatable. You know, if we cycle the key here, turn it off, turn it on. Starts with those two, and then five, even though it has four sensors in the back and two in the front. So let's take a look at the wiring diagram, do a code scan, see if we can figure this thing out. All right, so in the entire truck, we just have one code in navigation system, telematics, transceiver, disconnected. Not sure if that was there before or after the accident, but it doesn't seem like it's related to the parking aid problem. Now, let's go into all data, do a little research on the system, because there's no module here that says like parking aid module or anything. There's just 17 modules and nothing says parking aid or there's radar cruise, pre-collision system, but not parking aid. So let's go take a look in all data. All right, here's all data. Parking assist, intuitive park assist from August 2017. All right, let's take a look. OE diagrams, we've got three fuses that go to this uh, park neutral position switch. I don't know how three fuses are tied into one wire, but okay. And then if you're in reverse, these two are connected. If you're in park, these two are connected. Two wires go off the screen and go right to Clearance Sonar ECU. So this is the computer responsible for parking aid. Here is 
the button on the dash, the sonar switch assembly, back sonar clearance, or clearance sonar switch assembly, okay. And here are the sensors. So there's a front right and a front left. So it's interesting that the front left talks to the front right, which then talks to the ECU. So it's like a little daisy chain. Okay, let's keep going. Next we have the four rear sensors. So rear left, rear left center, talks to the rear right center, talks to the rear right, that talks to this clearance sonar ECU. All right, that's the layout so far. There's a ground, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more wires going to the next page. And it looks like these eight wires all go to the combination meter assembly. Interesting. And this is not setting any codes. And the module itself, the parking aid module, is not on a network. That kind of makes sense. We couldn't see it on the scanner. So it talks through the cluster and just pops up that icon. It doesn't talk to anything else. So it's a 2020 truck, you would think that all the modules would be on the network, but not in this case. So how do you diagnose it? Hmm. We can unplug some stuff and see if the icon flashing changes. Um, I'm sure there's some information on testing each individual sensor and what the wires are supposed to do. But let's start with the basics and do a quick visual inspection on this thing. Alright, so we got the right front sensor out, the one that the dealer was uh, fussing about. And it was a little, I guess, what, smashed in or not. You can see it's indented in the holder. But it still looks like it's in one piece. Okay. Let's just unplug it and see if anything changes on the display on the cluster. Now to unplug it, I guess you got to remove that little clip, like so. Okay, there it is, six pins. Let's see if anything changed when you first turn the key on. Does that right front start flashing? Okay, let's see. Yes, it did. So now all four of them flash, and then five. Okay, Don, so we're, we're on the right track then. So go ahead and plug that one in again. So the signal must go through the right front to the left front. If you unplug the right front, you'll also disable the left front. Let, let me know when it's plugged in. All right, and key on. Okay, now just those two in the back, or at least the middle and the left. Okay, great. So let's uh, do a visual inspection on that wiring harness and the sensors themselves. All right, so we found this bulk connector that connects the truck to the bumper. And then, according to the diagram, we have to go through the rear right sensor first, that's the one that was damaged, to get to the rear right center, left rear center, and rear left. Okay, so if we unplug that bulk connector, right Don? Yeah. Let's just, let's just try unplugging it and seeing what, um, what the... Uh, display does. Okay, so that's unplugged. Let's see if anything changed. Alright, so now the whole rear bumper is unplugged. And... Okay, now all three in the back are saying disabled. So that's good. Now we'll plug the bulk harness in and then unplug a sensor one at a time and see where you know, there might be a break in the wire. All right, so well now let's unplug. This one's pretty easy to get to. This is the right rear center sensor. Okay. As long as that clip is friendly. There we go. I got that one. Let's see what changed. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so what do we expect? Probably back to what we started with. Yep, so the very left one and the middle one are flashing. Now I wish it had an indicator for each sensor, but it only has three indicators for four sensors. So we don't know if the middle one is, you know, good or bad. All right, so we have all the sensors out. Right rear, right center, left center, and left, left. Right, and that's right, right, like corner. So the signal has to go through here, through here, through here, and to the end of the line. We're getting the flashies for at least these two, possibly these three, so if the signal's not making it past the right rear the corner one, then the, the rest of them will be disabled. So where is the issue here? So what I did off camera is do a continuity check um, from here to this sensor. These three wires, they're continuous from here to this sensor. These are all continuous. And we know this sensor is online, the rear right. So could there be still be a bad sensor? One of these? Can we play a little Swaptronics, you know, musical chairs, and see if we can get the signal further down the line? I think that's the easiest thing to do before getting too crazy with uh, ultrasonic, you know, scope sensors and whatnot. So let's uh, let's think how to logically do this. All right. So I plugged in the left corner sensor on the right corner, left center on the right center in the right center on the left center and the end one is unplugged. Let's see if anything changed on the scanner. Or All right, let's turn that on. And... Ooh, so something did change. Now all three are not happy. Very curious. All right, so I put the right rear corner back in its home and let's see why is it not happy with anything now they should at least be happy with that right rear corner all right so I added one sensor the left corner I put in the left center so now we have one two three and missing on the left corner let's see what happens Now it's saying all three are messed up. Okay, that, I don't know if this strategy is gonna work. All right, so I plugged all the sensors back in the original spots. I wanna go back to the baseline. And Don said he tried it and... It works. <laughs> um... So we'll do a wiggle check, pop the sensors back in the bumper. If it keeps working, that's it. But was there a bad little connection somewhere? I don't know how to explain that. All right, so we're in reverse. Key on. Don, are you standing by the right? We got two red ones and then kind of a yellow one. Oh, okay, I see Don on the, <laughs> on the camera. All right, move over to the left slowly. Yep, okay, that changed. And go to kind of like the middle by the hitch. Okay, well I guess the garage door is pretty close too, so it's fussing yeah, about everything. Probably. Yeah, but it's it seems to be working. We put it back in park and... What about the front? What if you're in the front? The one sensor oh. we don't have in. You should have all... Oh, okay, you don't have it in. Okay, let's see. If I, so if I'm in drive... Okay, walk by that corner slowly. There it is. Don's walking in front and perfect, dude. It's working like a charm. What did we do though? I have no idea. And the rear's working. Everything's working. I mean, take it for a test drive and tell the customer, like, give them a one month guarantee or something. <laughs> yeah. It must have been a bad connection somewhere. I feel like I want to go back and wiggle some shit. Yeah, go ahead. W wiggle some shit. I'll, I'll put it in uh, in reverse. I never feel good about these. I know. I know what you mean. Don's going to do the wiggle check under the truck.
well, well, hopefully it'll stay working. You can almost see the uh, conference center from here. Got to go across the Hudson River, across the Tappan Zee Bridge. And we are running a little low on gas, but it's all downhill, right? <laughs> Aerodynamics for the win. Over 400 miles on this tank. That's pretty decent. We'll be there soon. CO2 is a fully oxygenated fuel that is a complete conductor. The higher the CO2 comes, the more, the better the reaction is, the more complete it is. An oxygen that isn't converted is left during combustion. That tells me a lot about what happened in the cylinder, which we're going to see during this case study. Is that the only thing that's going to cause this problem? Does that make sense? Keep an open mind. And I just seriously don't see where scientists have been looking for other possibilities, like the sun's energy cycle, or the Milanovic cycles, or other things that can cause us. Oh, no, it's CO2. But you know, there's big money in CO2. And what really is the king of the modern automobile? The assembly line actually being able to make or produce a car that everyone can buy is important. It's Henry Ford. That's the father of our business. He says, if you believe you can or you believe you can't, both are equally accurate. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can. Guys, when I'm running over to fix that car that Darren says, oh, it's one of those cars you love and it's a magnetized crack. I didn't go there thinking I can't do this. I went there knowing I can do this. No, you can do this. You guys can do this. You can be the top tech in your area. But the first thing is you got to believe you can do it. Because both are equally, they're both equally correct. Comes. Boom! Hell yeah! You saw it live. The odometer on the 96 Mystique just rolled over 300,000 miles. And it's running like a brand new car. I don't know how to explain it. These cars, you know, they're known as the Mercury Mistake. This must have been a good one because. I mean, I don't know, it's all original, the original engine, transmission, even the CV axles. The only thing um, I had to do on the drivetrain is replace the clutch 60,000 miles ago. So seven years ago, I bought this car for $500 cash, and I think I uh, got my money's worth, huh? <laughs> it's, it's just a blast to drive, it's going to keep going.
just super smooth. Had a blast at the TSD 2024. Um, hanging out with great people, great training. Highly recommend that you guys sign up for any training you can find. It's it's really not a waste of time whatsoever. You know, you learn a lot, you go for the training, and you meet fellow technicians who are excited to be in this field. So. Uh, we'll wrap this one up and we'll see you in the next one.